gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna show you how to get rich. When you travel around the world and you see people who are so disadvantaged, do you not get so juiced about what you can do? Because when Grant said, what he wants to do is take a portion of what he does to give back to the world. To the I'm world. looking to maximize opportunity because I give 20% of my net dollars go to charity. Let's give it up for your man, Greg Cardone! These people love you because you're genuine. And I ask people this question. I say, do you have a dream? How many people have a dream here? Every seat in here will be a great seat. The sound will be perfect. You will be connected to super entrepreneurs. Get your seat today. We overpromise and overdeliver. We don't criticize, we create. You must surround yourself with people committed to knowing. Be relentless, be strong, know everything. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next year. Connect! Hey, welcome to Power Players. My name's Grant Cardone, and every week I bring you somebody in power. I got I got a dub like a triple threat today because I have David Osborne. David's in uh, Austin, Texas. He wrote a book called Wealth Can't Wait. It was released the same weekend that Be Obsessed or Be Averaged uh, was released. And uh, David, man, I got money on my mind, brother. It's great to be with you, Grant, and money makes the world go round, my friend. So, hey, tell me, before we get into who David is, I want to, I want to talk about the book, okay? Uh, it's at Amazon. It's done extremely well. Wealth Can't Wait. I love the title. What, why Wealth Can't Wait? Why are you saying that to people? Look, for, for me, wealth's not just about money, Grant. I know you concur with me on this. It's about health. It's about an optimal life. It's about great relationship. It's about abundance and prosperity. So why would you wait for that for one second? If you could have it right now, you'd want it right now. Dude, I want it like yesterday. Give me some you more. You already got it, but you want more, right? There's always more. Like yeah, so, so let's talk about that for a second. Why do you think people like, I'm doing this documentary right now, going around the country, asking people what they were taught about money, wealth, rich, et cetera. And I end the interview with, hey, just finish this statement. Rich people are? Amazing, awesome, beautiful, wonderful. I haven't incredible. heard that one time. I've heard <laughs> greedy, terrible, you know, hateful. Like, wh why, why do people, why did the hair on their, on their back stand up when you bring you up I have no idea. I mean, there's a lot of programming out there. You know, rooted, gr 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 money is the root of all evil and that kind of stuff. But I'll tell you, the, the rich people I know are up, up to amazing things. I know a bunch of people in the 500 million club, 200 million club, and, and they're, every one of them just about has adopted a cause of some sort. People are bringing clean water all the way through Africa. A uh, guy in Austin I know is trying to end homelessness in Austin. He's done it by buying a 30-acre parcel of land, and they built like a homeless village where they create a community. It's called Community First. Um, there's a lady I know who's involved in bringing single moms that are addicted to drugs off the street, put them in a house, and help them get jobs. They retrain them. They have like a huge success rate. It's not a huge number of people. So this idea that wealthy people are greedy, there are probably really wealthy, greedy people out there. But honestly, I'd say it's just like the general population. There's really greedy, poor people out there, too, and really mean, poor people. And yeah. I think it's about the same percentage. The wealthy people I know, it's probably 10 percent are just jerks. 20 percent are amazing and the rest are all somewhere in the middle. But most of them are up to something. And if you've got a ton of money and you want to bring clean wells to Africa, you know, you give one hundred thousand dollars instead of a thousand dollars. So it's they're not better people, but they're able to make a bigger impact. And without wealth, you can't make a bigger impact. And I have no understanding why. Maybe it's a way to stop themselves from being successful or to put out some vibe so they don't really have to work that hard because they believe all rich people are just jerks. Yeah, I tell you, when, you know, when I had 100 bucks in my pocket, I, it was hard for me to be very generous. <laughs> That's true. So, look, you've done, I mean, you do more than write books. You, you've uh, founded one of the top real estate brokerage uh, groups in the world. And Number six. Say again? Number six in the U.S. Number six in the U.S. And, and you founded over 50 companies. Yes. So we're going to come back and talk about that and the seven pillars of building wealth that you talk about in Wealth Can't Wait. If you're watching, I want you to go buy the book right now, Wealth Can't Wait. Okay, David Osborne is my guest today. He is a power player. 
And and David, before you are before you became who you are today, like bring me back to, to your childhood. Like where'd so, you grow so, up? So I got the military dad, the Green Bray Colonel dad, and the housewife mom who ended up being amazing, but but at that time she was the housewife. Growing up all around the world on military bases, uh, extreme discipline at home was my dad. So uh, I was kind of I acted out at school a lot, Grant, because I didn't fear teachers because the best they had was like 50 percent of what my old man had. So I was unfortunately a bit of a rebel without a clue. I wish I could go back and talk to myself as a young man and say, hey, dude, settle down, pay attention, be respectful. And I am all of that now. Yeah. But at that time, I kind of pushed back uh, stupidly, really, just because I I had a problem with authority which probably propelled me to make a lot of money because another thing I think wealth is is basically freedom. Um, yeah. But anyway, going back to that beginning, the other thing is I wasn't a great athlete, so I wasn't super. I wasn't the brightest kid. I was smart, but I wasn't the brightest. I I was a JV player, like I was always on the second team. I didn't like that. I'm I'm being honest with you. I wanted to be on the first team, but yeah. I just wasn't good enough. I never made the first team either, dude. <laughs> well, that's good. There's two of, and now now we're doing okay, dude. I was too small. I was too slow. I wasn't strong enough, and and I you know. I didn't have yep. anybody rooting for me saying, you can do it. Yeah, I, well, my dad worked mostly with my older brother, and I felt grateful for that as a kid because he was so hard on him. And my older brother is a pretty special athlete. He's got great hand-eye coordination and all the rest of it, but I wouldn't trade places for how old my, my old man pushed him pretty hard, and he kind of just ignored me because I guess I was kid number two. Not in a bad way. He loved me, Yeah, but yeah. he wanted to create an athlete with my brother. And uh, so, yeah, I didn't get the hand. I, I read an article once, Grant, and I've done it ever since with my kids. It said, if you just play ball sports with your kids five minutes a day. Now, I'm not five minutes a day, but I do it a lot. That's the real difference between great athletes and non-athletes is hand-eye coordination. So my little seven-year-old girl already can shoot baskets. She can beat me at pig. I told you I'm not a good athlete, so we'll play, you know, puppy, she likes to call it. But, you know, shooting baskets, it's a lowered basket. But she'll beat me straight up sometimes already at age seven with her underhanded throw because for a long time since she was a kid, I just roll a ball back and forth to her, throw the ball back and forth. And I think that's a gift you can give your kids. Um, it doesn't take much time, five minutes a day. And, and you know, that hand-eye lasts you for a lifetime. I'm teaching my kids backgammon, man, because I figure she's going to be playing playing the old games with the Persians and the Chinese. That'll be her <laughs> bankers. Awesome. Okay, so when did when did you get the wealth thing? When when did that? And by the way, does your brother have it? Does your brother have no, this? No, my brother and sister don't have it. They've done well. They're solid, you know, middle class folks and yeah. the upper middle perhaps, and they've done well. They're definitely not slouches. My sister's a lawyer. My brother's an engineer. Um, but. So I think being the, again, I was the youngest, maybe with a little chip on my shoulder. I liked working early. I, I had a lawn mower. So I started off in construction and then I got a land, mow, land mowing company that I created around uh, 17 and I made $20,000 my last year of high school living, living at home. So that's tax-free, $20,000. I'm sure I should have probably paid taxes on it, but I didn't know how. So I didn't back the, then. This seven, years is over. seven years is over now. So yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure this is a long time ago and, and I loved it and I loved working. So I found significance in work, but I didn't work smart back then. I just worked hard and, uh, and then, yeah, so then I evolved from there. I mean, really, you'd have thought as a kid I might have been the least likely to succeed. I even met one of my cousins, and I love this because it shows people how far you can come. I was shy. I was kind of awkward. I wasn't a great athlete. And uh, my my cousin who met me, when he knew me when I was like five, six, seven, he, go, he, he said, dude, you know, of all the kids I knew, I'd have thought you were probably the least likely to be successful. So I'm like, wow, that's good. That, that really made me happy. You'd think it would be an insult, but I'm like, that just shows that if yeah. you apply yourself and start paying attention and grinding it out, so, so day, David, did your, I mean, you came from a middle-class family. Yep. You never, you never, it sounds like the, you know, particularly with the military background, you, you guys never, you had a roof over your head and you had food and your mom was good to you and your dad was hard, but he was good to you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best home so, we ever lived in was uh, the military housing that we got provided. My dad finished his career as military attache in London, which is a pretty significant post. Uh, so we got a really nice house in London, and that was really cool. And we had a driver and the rest of it. And then we got out, and boom, it was right back to the middle class. I think I would guess that when my dad retired, the family's net worth was about 200 grand or something like that. We had a house, that was pretty much it. Maybe 300, I don't know, but it certainly wasn't a millionaire status. Yeah. Um, and so, so do, got, do, w w when, when did you like. There's, there's, you're in the same family as your, as your sister and your brother. Why did you get the money bug? When did it happen? Why, why, why? Like, sounds like you're a scientist or an engineer around money and wealth. I'm a super student of life. I was a terrible student. I told you that earlier. I got thrown out of a couple of high schools, but at the end of the day, as soon as I realized I liked making money and as, as soon as I realized I could read a book like Think and Grow Rich or read a book like 10X, 
uh, the 10x rule, uh, uh, suddenly I applied that stuff and I made more money. And then it, when I had money, I, I found that my jokes were funnier and I could go further. I could do more vacations. Everyone thought I was cooler. So I, I was like, okay, cool. I'll just go make money. That's the one thing that kind of fed me at a young age. And so I just got after it as hard as I could. Dude, I love that. I, I've never heard that your jokes get funnier as you get more money, <laughs> but I guess you're right. Well, people laugh at your jokes more. They may not be funnier, but when you're the boss and you're making the paychecks, I've noticed some people think your jokes are funnier. I kind of like it. You know, I heard a quote from an 80 year old CEO once, and he said, "They said, what's the difference between working and retiring?" He said, "Since I've retired, my jokes are less funny." So uh, I, do, I do think there's something to that. You're listening to David Osborne. This is Power Player. Stay with us. We'll be right back from the break. It takes motivation, trial and error and a decision to be successful. Drive is required. It's time to get it right. Finding a new home should not be stressful or boring. With over 14 years experience, Good Time Tommy has spent his time building strategies, tips, and content that will help you, the new homeowner or seasoned homeowner, get the best deal for your money. Educate, navigate, and celebrate. Because whether you're buying or selling, you're gonna get more traffic to your property promotion on every channel and watch as Tommy and his team work until you are satisfied. Your new home awaits you with Good Time Tommy and his team. Subscribe, like, and follow at goodtimetommy.com. That's goodtimetommy.com. Are you a small business who has employees that need health insurance? No problem. We at AG Capital have a brand new solution for you. AG Capital is a nationwide healthcare broker who works with every insurance and every healthcare provider to get you, the business owner, the best rates and the best protection for your employees. AG Capital will immediately show you how to add profit to your bottom line and show you, the employee, how to get a cheaper premium. Register now at agcapitalgroup.com. That's agcapitalgroup.com. If you are a business owner who needs custom software solutions through Amazon Web Services to automate, speed up, and enhance your business so you can focus on what you do best, which is grow your company, let Nico's Computer Engineering get you started today. With a free consultation, CEO and owner Tim Clark has spent the last 10 years building custom software for companies around the United States. Whatever your need is, whatever industry, if you need efficiency, Tim Clark can help you. Nico's Computer Engineering knows that you value speed to market. That's why we have the fastest turnaround and software implementation on the planet. If you want to get started with Nikos, go to nikoce.com. That's nikoce.com to get started right now. Hey, welcome back to Power Players. My name's Grant Cardone. I'm with David Osborne. He wrote a book called Wealth Can't Wait. I want you to get it right now. Stop what you're doing. Go to Amazon. If that's your favorite book book place, do you have it on audio as well, or just we just do? We just got released on audio. I don't know why it took a delay, but it just came out. I've got your book on both audio and physical. I like audio a lot. I listen yeah. to stuff at two two times speed and get through it twice as fast. When I order a book, I always order the book and the audio. I read it when I can at night, and then I listen to it on my way to work. So I do the same thing. Hey, this Amen. guy, folks, this guy, David Osborne, wrote a book called Wealth Can't Wait. We're going to talk about it right now. He's founded 50 companies, okay? So he's not just a writer, <laughs> which, yeah. which I'm not going to even go into that. But And the number six biggest real estate brokerage in the world. What kind of real estate is that, David? We're residential sales. So I was lucky, and I heard you say in your book, uh, you know, uh, and I, by the way, I was sitting with Richard Branson one time, and he said, people say I get lucky because I started <laughs> Atlantic right at the time then records were going out of business and he said I did get lucky but you got to put yourself in a position to get lucky so I got I got lucky that my mom was a real estate agent Keller Williams which was like tiny at the time and I happened to join Keller Williams and it started expanding and I just expanded right along with it so I was buying franchises uh, in my late 20s like 28 29 I really started got started at 27 and then I just 
my goal at one point was to have 100 franchises. Uh, today, I only have 14, but those 14 do 8.9 billion, 35,000 units. And we've got about 4,500 agents, and it's been a great run. And what I learned from that, Grant, is if you're committed and you work really hard, you could do really, really well. That's all it really takes to be successful is just commitment and hard, hard work. But, but if you are also with a group of people or a, if you're lucky enough to align with something that kicks butt and does amazingly well with you, there's like a 10x occur that occurs around that. And Keller Williams was a driven, amazing company, and I got to – take my energy and have it multiplied by that company. So, so David, let's talk about that because you're talking about the hard work, but people do need a vehicle. So the re so the, there's more money made in real estate than any other place in the history of time. So I think real estate's a great place to start. And I know a bunch of people that were just successful realtors that are also financially free. And I know even more that made a bunch of money and are completely broke. So wherever your place is, you've got to know, like I could never be a programmer because I can't program. I'm not that good a student, but if you've got to know your place, the point is not, it's not the place, it's how deep you go. If you want to get really high paid, you've got to go deep into your skill set. You got to drive down into it and become the very best you can. And uh, that's what makes all the difference. And yes, you do want to position yourself to win, Grant. You want to be in a, a field where it's blowing up and where it's doing well. And you've got to use both. Go deep, get strong, and make sure you're going deep and strong. And like landscape gardening would have not worked for me to hit the level of wealth I'm at today. There's only so many yards you can cut. Um, so it's both. You got to work hard and you got to find a place to Dude, win. Uber, Uber landscaping. I'm thinking there's going to be an Uber yeah, there landscaping. You go. There's okay. Not, there's so, Uber everything out there nowadays, yeah, isn't there? Yeah. Now, now, how important? Because I'm having a realization in my career today that that particularly with the the work I do in helping people and companies, I should have started on the wealth thing. Because I think if a person, a talented person, finds the right space and the right vehicle, but doesn't have the wealth component, like like, yeah. How important do you think the wealth component is? Understanding what it takes to have choices and freedom in life. Yeah, so I'm yeah. massively purposeful. And one of my purposes is to be financially free at a massive level. And to me, that's wealth. No one's on the Forbes 400 list unless they have wealth. They have to have a billion dollars worth of assets to get on that list. So you, you got to own assets. And people go out there and make a ton of income, but that's not enough. I mean, there are doctors making a million bucks a year, lawyers making a million bucks a year. It's not enough. You've yep. got to actually have assets. And my goal has always been grant assets to create income. So I've been a cash flow. Um, you know, I, I've chased cash flow hard. Like that's the thing. So every dollar I get, I look at it as 10 cents a year for the rest of my life. Now I don't live small, so I'm not trying to be cheap, but I lived a lot smaller back in the beginning Yeah. because I knew that if I had a hundred thousand dollars, that was 10,000 a year for the rest of life. If I was smart with it, and that's what I've done a bunch of. And so today I, you know, I don't have to ever work again if I don't want to, but I still just enjoy it a lot. You know, it's interesting. That's the exact math. My first goal was I want to earn $10,000 a year in passive income. If I could get a hundred, I think I can figure out some vehicle, some mechanism that'll earn 10%. Yeah. So it's a, yeah. Yeah. So, so what, what, what is enough then? Cause everybody's going to be asking this question to you. It may, it's amazing how things change. And when you talk about the 10,000 a year, you know, like I remember my first goal was to have 10 paid for rental properties. And I yeah. figured that would generate for me about 10, 10,000 a month, you know, free and clear, maybe a little less, maybe a little more depending on the price range. But then I got learning. And so we talk, and I know you talk a lot about hard work and hustle, and I'm a big fan of that. Like I, I work 20 years in 10 years, right? I don't, I don't know any way to do it other than working 20 years in 10, right? So that means you work 80 hours a week, basically 70, maybe most people work 35 hours a week. So I did that. But as I've gotten older, the main distinction is now I work much smarter. So being purposeful is my new mantra. Back then it was just work my butt off. Now it's like, okay, if I work on the smartest thing with the biggest outcome, I can actually work four hours and get more done than that kid working 16 hours could 20 years ago. So, so that's being purposeful. What is enough? Like, here's the thing. Like, I am already doing more and more in charity. And you talked earlier about not giving away much. When I was younger, I didn't give away that much. But it suddenly dawned on me as I was getting older that I wanted to give away some money. So I just give away a percentage of my income right now, right? It's a, and it's fun. It's kind of, it's really liberating to give away $250,000 a year. That's what I do right now. I give away 250 grand a year and I just choose causes that touch my heart. But as time evolves, I would like to get into a space where I was more intimately involved with the money I'm giving away. Maybe opening a school right, uh, for right. kids like I was, or maybe getting deeper into, you know, anything, healthcare, something with kids. It's, it's great to see the next generation coming up. Um, but, but, but enough doesn't mean I'd stop doing what I do. I already can do, you know, in one hour, the work that used to take me probably four hours when I was 20, I'm assuming as I get older, that'll continue to improve. So I could actually work 20 hours a week now and it's equivalent to working 80 hours a week. So I will keep working, having a magnificent life and finding more and more ways to give money away, mainly because you're either expanding or contracting in life and I'm not ready to contract. There'll be a time for sunset but I'm not there yet. And I know it'll come and I'm not stupid enough to think, you know, Michael Jordan can't play in the NBA forever. 
Uh, I'm going to try to recognize that time, but right now I'm just going for more of a, okay, 20 hours. You know, I probably work right now 30 to 40 hours a week and some weeks 60 still, but I'm not working 80 hours a week like I was as a kid because I don't have to. I remember when I was a part-timer. <laughs> <laughs> opportunity, it's what we live for. Financial freedom is created from opportunity. At Symmetry Financial, we are committed to getting hard workers, talented individuals who love to sell, who love to help others create a strong six-figure income. If you ever wanted to have everything you wanted in life, Symmetry Financial holds the key to get you there. We want you, the top talent, the best in the business to join our team. Sign up now at sfgcareers.biz. That's sfgcareers.biz. Make six to seven figures overnight as an expert in your industry. Monetize your knowledge, monetize everything you work for, and make it work for you. Russell Whitney, expert in knowledge monetization, has worked with some of the largest brands, Robert Kiyosaki, Tony Robbins, Kevin Harrington, and George Foreman, in building out content that made them kings of their space. Scale your business to a nine-figure brand, sell from stage, create events, build the sales team, and get moving right now under greatest expansion in business yet. Visit RussellWhitney.com. That's RussellWhitney.com to get started. Are you tired of buying ads? How much would five times more visitor from search engines like Google or Bing do for your business? Link Research Tools helps you increase that free organic traffic with companies like Hertz, MTV, and LinkedIn have increased their revenue as much as 600% using Link Research Tools. We have offerings to get your business to become the dominant force on the internet. The secret of internet traffic is what we give you and convert that traffic into cash flow for your business. Learn more at linkedresearchtools.com. That's Link Research Tools tools.com and sign up now. Are you an accredited investor with $350,000 in the bank, liquid, earning less than half a percent? Hey, my name's Grant Cardone. I started with $350,000 years ago investing in multifamily income producing real estate. And today that real estate is worth over $550 million. That's right, over a half a billion dollars. That pays me every single month returns of six, eight, 10, 12, 15, 20, and even 25%. I want you to come partner with me at CardoneCapital.com. If you love real estate, you like passive income, you like positive cash flow, if you like appreciation over long periods of time, if you're willing to be patient, let me go to work for you. Come invest with me. CardoneCapital.com forward slash invest now. This is only accredited investors, $350,000 liquid in the banks. Come invest with me now at CardoneCapital.com forward slash invest now. Uh, so well, tell me, the tell thing me about this. You realize I work, I might work hard all week, but then I might take a three week vacation. So I take a lot of vacations now. I take my family yeah. on amazing trips. I got two kids. I'm, they matter a lot to me. Yeah. Took them uh, to Seychelles and rented a boat and then went to South Africa, went on safari. Uh, yeah, I like how, how was the Seychelles? So. The Seychelles was amazing. The bummer was a bunch of my daughter, two of my daughter, my two daughters got seasick, so they were thrown up on the boat. So we were supposed to be on this boat for seven days. The islands are beautiful. The tortoises are amazing. There was so much fun stuff to do. We had a blast, but I ended up chartering helicopters to fly between the islands while the boat sailed between the islands because my whole family was getting sick. Oh wow, well that's better. So we than were pirates. so the captain of the boat's like, no one's ever done this before. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, well we'll meet you at the port on the next island, and we'd take a 20 minute chopper ride. They'd sail across for two and a half hours, and then we'd all reconvene. And eat dinner on the boat but we had a blast it was an amazing time and uh yeah it was it was beautiful see to me that's the the beauty of money you've mentioned two things one charity and number two is being able to go someplace like that give your kids that experience not worry about money and not come home to a bunch of debt tell me about the seven pillars of building wealth yeah so you know my partner paul morris and i wrote this book and we were trying to figure out look it all starts with mindset that's the that's the early stuff but then how do you build practical tools and the number one tool, as you know, Grant, is that client acquisition is everything. When I got into real estate first and I was a regular realtor, I, I realized pretty quickly this business is easy. The only hard part is finding the clients, right? Finding the client is the hard part because once you get them, it's just about servicing them. And if you're hustling, you'll serve them. So that's number one on the pillar list is client acquisition is king, which is why the guy that's the rainmaker has the corner office in the law firm, even though he never shows up. He may be golfing every day, but he gets the most money because he knows how. And the guy that's just doing all the work and maybe the smartest, hardest working guy in the firm is working 80 hours a week and getting paid one tenth of the guy that's the rainmaker. So you got to develop the skill. At, you so know, you're really talking about revenue when you're talking about client acquisition, you're talking about the potential to earn revenue. 
Correct. It's all about revenue generation. Income yeah. earners are the highest paid people in the world. Life's got hunters and skinners, right? And if you have, if you're a really good hunter, it means you bring in a lot of business. And if you have bad skinners, you get a pile of rotten meat. We've probably all done that at some point in our lives where we generated so much prospects that we couldn't serve them properly. And then there's like a stink around your business. But if you only have skinners and no hunters, everybody starves, right? Yeah, so yeah, there's no yeah, food yeah. in the village. So that's why hunters tend to get paid more than skinners. I don't think it's fair. It's just the way life is. So you learn, you got to learn how to uh, acquire you know, clients and whether it's online through the internet or direct face to face, you just got to develop that ability to bring in the bacon. I'm going to show you what to do. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you how to get rich. When you travel around the world and you see people who are so disadvantaged. Do you not get so juiced about what you can do? Because what Grant said, what he wants to do is take a portion of what he does to give back to the world. I'm looking to maximize opportunity because I give 20% of my net dollars go to charity. Let's give it up for your man, Greg Cardo. These people love you because you're genuine. When I ask people this question, I say, do you have a dream? How many people have a dream here? Every seat in here will be a great seat. The sound will be perfect. You will be connected to super entrepreneurs. Get your seat today. We overpromise and overdeliver. We don't criticize, we create. You must surround yourself with people committed to knowing. Be strong, know everything. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next year. Connect!